Well, it's that time of year again, a time when Harley Davidson pukes out its model lineup for the forthcoming year. <coughs> Over the years, we have become accustomed to all the hype, representing nothing more than a set of new paint jobs. But this year, it's a little different. Different in a good way? That's for you to decide. Astonishingly, for 2024, Harley-Davidson brings us no less than four new bikes. Yes, you heard that correctly, four new bikes. There's a new road glide and a new street glide, as well as two new additions to their super premium CVO lineup. In this video, we'll provide you with an overview of the new models. Later this month, we'll be bringing you the full article about these bikes, together with our overall critique. So please head over to Motorculture's website and grab your free subscription so that you don't miss that. First up, there's the new Road and Street Glide models. Both models are virtually the same, with one notable difference. The Road Glide's front fairing is frame mounted, whereas the Street Glide's fairing is mounted to the front forks. The revised bodywork trickles down from the CVO models that were launched late last year and this gives the new bikes a thoroughly modern aesthetic. Aside from the new design, Harley says that the new fairings reduce wind buffeting by nearly 60%. That will be a welcome feature for long road trips. Other changes include longer travel suspension and a redesigned seat, both of which should further enhance rider comfort. For 2024, both bikes get the 117 Milwaukee 8 V-Twin engine. This engine was first used in the previous generation CVO model and the larger engine capacity delivers an increase in power. Compared to the outgoing road and street glide models that had the 114 engine, there's now 17 brake horsepower more at 103 horsepower and 12 newton meters more torque at 121 newton meters. Harley Davidson say that they've also enhanced the cooling system, which apparently improves the intake and exhaust flow, thereby delivering a smoother ride with reduced heat. Other additions to the road and street glides are four rider modes, Roan, Rain, Sport and Custom, and an enormous 12-inch TFT touchscreen display. This display is well laid out and easy to use, making it by far the standout feature of the new models. It even manages to make BMW's 10-inch TFT screen, as used on models like the R18 and the K1600, seem a little small. As you can imagine, this big TFT provides everything imaginable, including phone connectivity, satellite navigation, and multimedia capabilities. This being a Harley, of course, you also get a 200 watt music system with two fair fairing mounted speakers. Let's be honest, it wouldn't be a Harley unless you could irritate the neighbors. Both of the new Harleys cost $25,999 US dollars, which is a $4,000 increase on the previous generation models. Next up, Harley-Davidson brings us a CVO version of their Pan America Adventure bike. This is an interesting addition that's verging on utterly pointless. We have no idea who this bike is aimed at or why Harley-Davidson decided it was prime for the CVO treatment. If this is supposed to be Harley's response to BMW's new R1300GS, they have missed the mark completely. Where BMW brings us a whole load of technical, practical and functional enhancements for the world of adventure touring, Harley-Davidson have done absolutely sod all to the Pan America other than load it with a host of accessories from their catalogue and a fancy new paint job. This thing is not exactly hogtastic. In fact, it's nothing more than a pig with lipstick. Well done, Harley. 
Do you really think that cosmetic add-ons will improve the appeal of one of the ugliest bikes available on the market today? All while you disguise your complete lack of any ongoing development. When it comes to the price of the CVO Pan America, Harley have scored a monumental own goal. It costs a whopping 28,399 US dollars, which is 8,400 more than the non CVO model. Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah. Even allowing for all the added accessories, that's still a huge premium for a CVO badge on a mediocre adventure bike. Considering that a fully specced and far more capable BMW R1300 GS will cost you two and a half thousand dollars less, the CVO Pan America makes no sense at all. Finally, we come to something that's actually rather exciting. This is the Road Glide ST, and it's been given the CVO treatment. This is a bagger with a high output version of the 121 cubic inch Milwaukee 8 engine. This bike actually produces 127 brake horsepower and a whopping 193 newton meters of peak torque. Hello, hello, hello. Harley have also done a good job in reducing the weight of this bike. The CVO Road Glide ST weighs 12 kilograms less than the regular CVO Road Glide. With a more powerful engine and less weight, naturally the ST delivers a significant increase in power to weight ratio. But let's not get too carried away. This ST model is still extremely hefty at 363 kilograms dry. In their quest to reduce the weight, Harley have finally discovered the benefits of using lightweight materials. For example, there's a titanium exhaust with a carbon fiber muffler. So some of the bodywork is even carbon fiber and there's even light lightweight wheels. Harley have equipped the ST with excellent Brembo brakes and top-notch Showa suspension. There are also multiple riding modes, two of which are called Track and Track Plus. Okay, at least that proves that Harley-Davidson have a sense of humor. The ST's infotainment unit is pretty comprehensive and it's mated to a 500 watt audio system. That's enough to drive all of your neighbors mad and you'll generally piss people off whenever you ride. Last but by no means least, we come to the delicate subject of price. Modern Harley Davidsons have all earned a reputation for being insanely overpriced. Unsurprisingly, this CVO Road Glide ST further perpetuates that reputation. The starting price is an astonishing $42,999 US dollars. Oh, for fuck's sake! So that's it for this brief overview of the four new 2024 Harley Davidsons. We'd love to hear what you think about these bikes and the direction in which Harley seems to be heading. Our full reviews of these bikes will be available in the February edition of the Motor Culture magazine. Please head over to our website and grab a free subscription for in-depth analysis and commentary. There's a link in the description. In the meantime, thanks for watching and please consider liking and subscribing.